Hey all, Bill Greenberg with PhoneScholar.com and I'm here once again to impart my ultimate wisdom on you. Actually, it's not my wisdom, it's mostly the wisdom of people that I find and read about. But uh, today's Wednesday, November 17th, 2010, and here's a summary of what we got on the website. To see the entire articles, go to www.PhoneScholar.com. And of course, if you have any questions, send them to me at phone que uh, blog questions at PhoneScholar.com. So really not a lot, but really cool things on here. So here we go. BlackBerry Playbook Tablet. 10 key features and facts. And about six weeks ago, BlackBerry announced the tablet, excuse me, the Playbook tablet that they're going to be coming out with. They haven't announced exactly when. They're saying first quarter of next year. And they haven't announced a price, but they are promising to be under $500. But they're not saying which version that is. And so far, they're saying that there's going to be uh, three different versions. The uh, 16, 32, and 64, just like the iPod may, the iPad may be also an 8. But here's the 10 things that they're talking about in this article. There's also a video comparing the tablet to, excuse me, the playbook, I keep calling it the tablet, the playbook to the iPad web browsing and it's extremely interesting. Now this is a video from BlackBerry, remember that, so they're going to be a little bit biased, but of course they're also the only ones that are physically have their hands on it. So here's the first video showing them side by side hands on. So take a look at them, but the, the 10 features are storage, uh, the color options, and there's going to be many colors for the backs of the tablet, supposedly, the playbook. Um, no standalone cell phone, so it's not going to have a cell phone built into it or cell phone access, but of course there will be apps that you can use it like that. The processor powerhouse, it's a dual core processor. For those of you who aren't sure what a dual core processor is, basically it's like having two m brains in one system. And while with the single core, one brain gets everything, but with the other one, while one brain is working on a problem like hooking to the web browser, the other can work on other stuff. So the speed of this thing is going to be phenomenal. The Wi-Fi, it's going to, there's two versions of Wi-Fi out there right now. It's going to be compatible with both. Uh, it's enterprise ready. Nobody's quite sure what that means, but they're thinking it's going to be part of the BlackBerry Enterprise system. So check that out. Uh, it has two cameras, the three megapixel front, five megapixel back, which both have 1080p high definition video, which is more than anything else right now that has 720p, so a higher resolution video camera. Full Flash 10.1, which when you look at the video, you'll see the way the websites work and everything. It's pretty awesome. BlackBerry Tablet OS, which it looks like is actually better, a better operating system than their BlackBerry 6. And hopefully they're saying that once this comes out, they'll actually put some of this OS technology into the new phones rather than the other way around. And then a 5300 mega amp battery, which is a pretty big battery, but they're still saying the battery life probably still won't match the iPad. But this thing looks like a real, real, true, tremendous thing. Now, of course, everybody's saying, is this going to be the iPad killer? Well, it's kind of tough to say because, number one, it's not out yet. And number two, by the time this is out and popular, the iPad 2 may be out, and it'll probably address most of these things. So if you're waiting to get the iPad now, the cool thing about all these tablet things is there's no contract required with any of these. So you can get one now, and in six months, if you have the money to buy another one and want to try something different, you can. So there you go. Next, Google Voice app finally launches on iPhone. And after a year of speculation whether Apple was cutting them out or what they were doing and all kinds of stuff and went to the courts and went to the FCC, yesterday the Google, app, the Google Voice app finally appeared. And for those of you who aren't exactly familiar with the Google uh, Voice, I actually put the video that I put a couple of months ago back on this one to explain what the Google Voice is. But basically, you get a phone number from Google that you tell people to call and they can actually, or if you call somebody's Google Voice application number, you can actually leave messages at three to five different places, their home, their work, and their cell phone, things like that. Uh, it's really cool. So check, check out the video. It is a free application. Uh, it has the examples and there's a link to the application at the bottom of the article. So check that out. Next, Do You Tango? And it's a new app again, a free app for the iPhone that allows you to do the face, FaceTime video chat over the 3G network. It's really cool, so you might want to go ahead and do that. Now, it also allows you to do the FaceTime chat across multiple platforms, so like if you have somebody that has an Evo 4G. The only drawback is they also have to have the Tango application. So if you know somebody that has a, a, a front-facing phone with some kind of video chat, tell them to download this free application from Tango and they will be able to go ahead and do that. The link for the application is also here. Under categories, Apple, iPad, and iPhone. Group mail with attachments, getting close to perfect. Again, there's a video showing what this application is. There's also a link to the app. It's a 99 cent app or a $1 app, whatever, you, they, 99 cents. And basically it gives you the ability to finally put 
uh, group emails, but attach video, photos, documents, maps and addresses, audio clips, contact info, uh, and other stuff and send them out to a group and you can pick the groups, you can customize it. It looks like a really, really good app for those of you that send out a lot of emails to a lot of different people. And it's good for the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod. So anything with 3.1 iOS, 3.1 or higher. So check that out, it does have a link. Next, under Amazon, Apple, iPad, and Kindle, survey. iPad is replacing a computer for many. And they surveyed 500 iPad users and asked them some of the habits that they use with their iPad. And 29% of them said it replaced their primary computer. Now they also asked about their which technology they use the most and they said the most used was the iPad at 32%, next was their laptops at 31%, the desktop at 22% and the smartphone for 15% and that's mostly all for web browsing. Some of the other things in the survey they asked were about the Kindle and iBooks, their daily usage, the applications that they download and the app habits, how they watch their news and the iPod to the uh, Mac Air and which one would they buy and which one would they get or if they got both. So check out the article. Again, um, really great stuff today. I hope you enjoy it, and I will talk to you tomorrow.